In this video, I'm going to be looking at fairly common things under my microscope in order to help generate a sense of relative scales. For this, I'm going to be using a special calibration slide that has tiny divisions on it, the smallest 0 0.01 millimeters or 1 micrometer. First up is refined white sugar, a collection of various size crystals. They're very irregular shaped, clumped, clustered, and they range from 300 to 700 micrometers. Next up is table salt. These table salt crystals are much more uniform. They're nice and square. They don't have as much variance as the sugar crystals did. They're almost all around the same size, with a few exceptions. And these crystals tend to range from about 400 to 550 micrometers. Next up is a fine sewing needle. First, we're going to look at the eye of the needle. This is hard to get into focus with the calibration slide at the same time because the needle is so high in the air relative to where the um, gauge is. But as you can see, it's approximately one millimeter long where the eye of the needle is and a quarter millimeter wide, 250 micrometers. The pin is even harder to get into focus with the slide because it's much finer and it's also much more elevated in the air over the slide. The numbers won't be as accurate because of the distances that the optics have to go, but the tip of the pin here is approximately 100 micrometers. Next up is a brown hair that I plucked from the top of my head. Brown hair is going to be much finer than black hair and still a bit bigger and thicker than most blonde hairs. Um, there are differences uh, in hair thicknesses. They can range quite a bit. Um, but my brown hair here from the top of my head should be about an average mid-range for a, a hair thickness. As we can see here, we can actually zoom in quite a ways to get a, a reading on this. And uh, we, you can see with the scale attached, this is almost five units divisions wide. So it's about 45 micrometers wide, the hair. Although not exactly a common item for most people, this culture Chilomonas paramecium is a food for uh, amoebas, another cell that I've actually got in another video that I show feeding these little single-celled floating, moving plant cells to this big blobby amoeba. These small photosynthetic cells are very small and we have to zoom in quite a ways here with the microscope. You can see them relative to these 0 0.01 millimeter bars that they are approximately two to two and a half bars long or approximately 25 micrometers in length. Unlike the tiny Chilomonas paramecium spiderweb silk, we can see with the naked eye quite easily. So it's quite surprising to find out just how very fine and tiny it really is. If we look under the microscope, we see that it's actually a strand is composed of several strands. Um, these strands are breaking and falling apart. They're also stretched very tight. I had problems trying to collect the spider silk on the actual microscope slide with the grating on it, so they're independently collected on a different one. But they're stretched tight as the process of trying to collect them. We can see here under the finest magnification of the microscope a big ball of spider web here where the all of the web has relaxed into a knot. It's not stretched here anywhere. And you can see it's quite uh, expanded, quite thick. It's about four micrometers. It might actually be a little bit bigger than that. And the smaller 
strands are on the order of a half a micrometer to a micrometer. This range of sizes is quite common for most spiders of all sorts. Next up is a yogurt that I kind of forgot about at the back of my fridge for past its expiry date. Uh, I've taken just a small sample of the liquid off of the top of this yogurt. In this droplet we find lactobacilli bacteria. These are the organisms that are actually responsible for making yogurt out of the milk products instead of cheese or something else. These bacteria tend to cluster in pairs and chains and uh, float around as a group and colonize in groups. These individual cells themselves though tend to be on the order of one and a half to two micrometers in length. Although these numbers are similar to the thinner spider silk we saw, these are really too small to actually see normally. The only reason we can see the spider silk effectively is because it's very efficient at scattering light. This is a visual summary made using bars that were drawn to exact scales relative to each other using the numbers that we've observed with all of the samples. This gives us an idea now for future videos when we are actually able to measure sizes of things. We'll see where they fall relative to things that we know about now. Most of these materials we're going to be coming back to later to re-examine in greater detail using different lighting techniques, uh, staining samples perhaps, um, a few other different tricks and, and techniques that will make them stand out differently and show some interesting properties about them especially the living organisms. We're going to have a fun time chasing them around and observing their fine little motions and things going on within them.